And what looks like a, a, a raised spot there where the seam sealer wasn't broke at all, was it? Now is corrosion. And that's because it's traveling, must be traveling from the seam section up here. So let's see if you can guess which car this is from the first five seconds of intro. Yep, you guessed that right, it's an E37 Z3M Coupe. So it's a November 1999 build date, which would have been registered as a model year 2000. Uh, it's got 89,000 miles on it and it's uh, the S50 engine. Now it's in with us at Reedish Motorsport because as these cars get a little bit older, we're seeing more and more corrosion problems and especially on the front sill sections on the Z3, um, starting to show a, a decent amount of corrosion, nothing structural that we've seen yet, but they are absolutely in line with the front wheels. And the makeup of the Z3 chassis is that you've got a boltable outer um, seal cover on there and, uh, and a very structurally solid, nearly two millimeters thick uh, seal section, which is this piece here. And you can see the bolt line here of the front seal panel. And this customer who's um, just recently bought this car has looked underneath, seen some corrosion, obviously done some Google searching, come up with um, us ourselves at Reedish Motorsport that do the restorations and also our video on YouTube that we've done this type of work on another Z3M before. He was obviously impressed, I believe, which is why the car is now here with us. So the left hand side is showing a bit more signs than the right hand side. Right hand side, you can see obviously an astral blue car, so corrosion color, typical brown and orange is uh, quite a contrast against the astral blue, so it stands out a little bit more. On a slightly different color car, it might be harder to see, but we can already see peeking up behind the boltable seal section that there is corrosion present on the structure. So quite rightly, the customer wants to get rid of that. So well, this is the start of the video process where we're gonna be taking the panels off. So it's front wheels, wheel arch liners, front and rear, um, front small little wing just up here, and then the front seal section as well, and then assess exactly how far this corrosion is traveling, whether it's actually making its way into the floor pan area up here. Um, we don't normally find much behind the wheel arch liners because they are obviously a wheel arch liner protecting it, but we certainly do find it underneath the seal cover. So as you can see, the M uh, Z3M is stripped down now, so that's the front wings are off, and also the under tray, the wheel arch liners, and the seal sections, which go all the way along underneath the vehicle right to the back. Um, so the left-hand side was the worst one that we saw, which is in this area here. You can see now how exposed that solid piece of seal section is. Now it's really thick. It's, uh, it's definitely one and a half mil, if not two mil thick very good uh, thickness of panel. So never really has any structural problems, but as you can see, gets stone chips from the wheel uh, flick up and then corrosion starts growing where the seam sealer has been broken. So not only have we got to do this central section, we've also got, we can see corrosion that's um, starting to form upon the unprotected sections, which are just hidden by the wheel arch liner, but there's no seam sealer up there. That's just e-coat or electrophoretic coloring. Um, luckily, around the edges of things, let's put some lights on the subject, around the edges up here, we've not got much issue, have we? But you can see we've got exposed and open seams, which are stitch welded together. Um, one stud broke on each side, so these are the studs that come out of the chassis to hold the wheel arch liners and stop them flapping. This is quite a common thing because they always are quite corroded, so the grab is very extreme when you try to undo them. Sometimes they open, sometimes they don't. So we've got that to do. We'll put, have to put two new rib studs on the chassis there. And then looking at the right hand side, we've got that pickling of corrosion here, which I, I'm pretty sure will be quite uh, an amount once we actually start taking the, the seam sealer off. There you go, there's a bit that's coming off there, quite open. I decided to get a pick so that I can show you a little bit more on camera what's gonna be under there. Now, not much of that is gonna give the car much worry, because like I say, it's not structural, but nevertheless, it's not nice to see that rust is actually starting to form. And what looks like a, a a raised spot there where the seam sealer wasn't broke at all was it now is corrosion and that's because it's traveling must be traveling from the seam section up here so we've got some certainly some work to do we're not going to be taking seal panels off we don't have that much of an issue we're not uh, we're not in restoration state on this car the panel is strong enough to renew again but it will certainly need chemical treatment once we've taken care of the loose corrosion and sorted that sort of thing out um, and there's a little bit of damage on the seam sealer just here by the looks of it. 
a little bit of flap in the seam seal. It looks like it's got caught on something. So plenty to do for us, but um, doesn't look too serious at the moment. And that's what the car looks like. Now it's um, stripped down on the first stage. So part way through the bare metal in stage. There's still a few areas we need to get to on this car, mainly around the jacking points, but we're going to do that shortly when we put the car down um, onto a stand system so that we can remove the lift arms and then get to the jacking point area. But that's coming up really nice. It is um, very thick metal you can see that we need to do a second pass there because we've still got corrosion dust and um and pitting which is going to be chemically treated to neutralize the corrosion later on in the process but first of all we're taking off the seam sealer the paint the eco and the loose corrosion but whilst doing that and having great access to the seal section because the boltable seals are removed we've noticed that the rears are also suffering um, now these ones are suffering just as bad as the fronts if not a little bit more so you wouldn't normally see any of this because this metal seal panel basically covers it all but now that's off and cleaned out you can see the corrosion is noticeable so that is going to have to be done as well well not has to be done but certainly a benefit to doing it whilst we've got great access it seems um, madness to ignore this area and one thing we like to do is try and make think of a way to make it more productive or save or keep the budget sensible rate so we're going to do that now whilst it's here we've also got more around the jacking point now it's been degreased up in this here's the black plastic jacking block which stays with the car and that is corrosion there around it so we need to t again put the car onto a stand so that we can take the lifting arms out take the jacking pads out and then a treat this corrosion remove it and treat it but we've got quite a lot of e-coat which is bubbling here and also around the side so we've got some up on this edge just here and also where the dirt and the mud have been sitting for a while it's all dry now we've actually got more around the outside as well i mean this is a boltable bracket that can be changed and bought for new uh, this area here which is very sort of internal seal section that's going to be nearly impossible to get to with the axle beam in, in place this owner does want the axle beam uh, powder coated um, which is going to be a later project so that section from that 90 degree line there going in that way that is going to have to be treated at a later date because it's not going to be in our plans today because we don't have access to get the axle out but we are going to do this area here where there's some corrosion just creeping around this lip here and what i was talking about a two millimeter seal previously in the video is a bit more noticeable here look how thick this piece of metal is this one is probably about 1.2 i'd say so this was either 1.5 maybe even 1.7 getting up to two it's a really really strong seal on these and these are no known absolutely known the Z3M coupes for being an extremely stiff chassis and that's because the exoskeleton sort of unbolts and therefore the um, doesn't give it any structure so the base structure of the car is extremely thick and very very strong so that's what we're going to do we're going to extend our work down to the rear end of the car as well now and just for the record this is the right hand side rear the opposite side again the corrosion wouldn't be seen normally because the seal cover is completely on there but we've got quite a lot of movement here which isn't isn't causing it any structural issues it's very strong doesn't flex or move but it's still not nice to see so again we're going to be treating that and it looks like we might have some yeah we've got some bubbling around the jacking pad as well so we need to work on that area so now the bare metal in work is completed on the seals uh dave is now treating the um, seal section with uh, pour 15 metal prep which has to be brushed on it's a liquid which is a blue color um, it, it, it's blue technically but it uh, goes on completely clear and it seems strange doesn't it adding a liquid to a bare metal surface but this is a chemical um, which is designed specifically for combating corrosion neutralizing it and once removed it will leave a zinc phosphate coat so we have to make sure that stays moist for 30 minutes or so and uh, and then wash that off um, and that really does help kill any corrosion that was found pitted um, in any of the metal grain. So this is the left front jacking point uh, just behind the seal section that we removed the corrosion and the loose seam sealer off. And now once the Pour 15 metal prep has been uh, washed off and dried thoroughly, you can see the, the shine of the metal is dulled down and that's because it's got a zinc phosphate coat on it, which will help the next layer of protection, which in this case is gonna be um, Pour 15 rust preventative paint. So um, Dave is just going to start painting that on. That's a brush on product, which uh, might just look like any old paint, but it's an extremely effective, um, well chemically balanced paint really that is super hard and durable once cured in around about um, two to four hours depending on temperature and humidity it sets like nearly resin I mean it's self levels so it's very smooth gives a glossy finish um, and it is so strong that you cannot 
you simply cannot scratch through it uh, unless you absolutely are forceful with a screwdriver or something. So stone chips don't give it any problems. Not that we're going to leave it la bare like this anyway. This is just the base coat and the first layer of protection on the bare metal. And um, like I've said in the previous video, one of the key things to do is do this in the shortest time possible. So that means uh, having the bare metal exposed for as least time as possible, effectively, in, all in the space of um, sort of half a day, really, at, at worst case, from the moment you sort of have the bare metal exposed to the point of um, coating and protecting this, that gives it a better chance of not having any sort of atmospheric um, moisture on it in any way. So we're going to carry on and get this coated. This is going to be the front sill section, um, obviously the rear that we've been working on and going down the sill section, just giving you a pan down towards the back of the car where we've already started. Um, we're actually doing the major, most of the sill section because we actually found microscopic corrosion uh, underneath the e-coat, even where there wasn't any seam sealer that needed some attention. And it just seems really perfect timing to do this whilst we've got the car completely stripped apart. We're never gonna get a better chance to extend the paint. So originally, and what most cars need is the front section, but this car needed some central section and certainly some section at the rear. Amazingly, the rear was actually, I'd say, worse than the front section. So it's definitely good that we're doing some of the rear workings as well. So the Pore 15 Rust Preventative Paint in black has now dried. And like I said, it self levels, give a really gloss finish. And that's the front uh, sill section, specifically over here where we were seeing a lot of the corrosion. You can see how glossy it is, actually gives a reflection of my glove quite well. Um, so we're gonna need to key this up for the next stage. Now this is a, a I'd, I'd almost refer it to as a resin paint. It's, it's 1K, but it's for some reason it goes off like a two-part resin, it's stunning stuff. So that is uh, being coated on the entire sill section over the bare metal areas where we were working, all the way to the rear as well, which I'm really pleased to say we've been able to include in this repair. So front, centers and rears, um, and now we're going to key that up ready for the next layer, which is a, a high build primer. So now the Pore 15 rust preventive paint's been keyed. Uh, the next layer has been applied, which is high build primer, which is this gray finish. Again, that's obviously a totally dry finish, um, which doesn't come off. And, um, and now that's dried, that we can go on to the next layer, which is almost the final one. This is gonna be the interesting part next coming up, which is the sprayable seam sealer, which is the textured finish we apply to replicate the BMW finish um, and also seal and finish all the overlapping joints like the seal edges where it meets the floor pan down this line here. So the sprayable seam sealer has been applied and also a top coat colouring. Now this is a colour that we formulated years ago um, taking a or using a spectrometer um, on a BMW transmission tunnel to make up the closest match possible to the BMW electrophoretic coating or e-coat as it's nicknamed. Uh, we've therefore um, used that and developed that into our product um, so it basically blends the sprayable seam sealer into a textured finish uh, which is coloured exactly like or as close as possible to the BMW finish. Um, so that's what it would have looked like when the car was new. Um, obviously disregard any color overspray from the chassis when the robots painted the car from brand new and then road grime, but that's what it would look like when it was brand new. So the texture is absolutely perfect. Um, it's a completely dry system. I always like to try and point this out. There's absolutely nothing coming off. It's a cured two-part system, so it has a hardener with it as well, which means it's really, really strong, resilient to chemicals and um, basic stone chipping and abrasion. Um, unless you were to actually use a screwdriver to scrape on this stuff, it wouldn't actually cause it a problem. So we're really proud of that. And normally on the Z3s, we are just doing this front section. I know I've mentioned it a few times, but we have on this car gone a lot further. All of the central and the rear, which ironically was the worst at, on, on this particular car, the rear. So it seems like as they're aging, as well as the fronts, the rears are also needing work as well. We'll go on to that in a minute and show later on um, the rest of the car all the way around. But this incorporates, um, you know, it's not thick, it's not gloopy, and uh, you can still see all the stamped pressings, like the raised sections 
where the panel was produced and stamped years ago and all those little castellated flutes as I like to call them um, and the water drain outlets there's one there the larger one for example and here is the aperture where the uh, jacking pads go into um, and it's you can see everything you can even still see original spot welds was one there and one there so that what I'm trying to say is it's a, it's a textured finish but it's thin and durable it's not um, a, a typically uh, rushed or sort of floppy seam sealer like some people might think this is a very good well-developed automotive system um, we're very proud of it and uh, and that is the front section now let's go and have a look at the rest of the items so here we are looking at the left hand side center seal section let's go underneath a little bit more you can see that we've masked the entire underside of the vehicle that's because we don't want any overspray it's often an area that um sorry to say that some body shops do forget or do miss so when they're painting a car you do get lots of different oversprays on components on the exhaust and certainly on plastics that you just don't want whereas we think about all that sort of thing because we're trying to do it as professional as we possibly think we can so coming down to the rear sail section here is the rear jacking point area that lives in there these are standard welding points for the factory interesting that they don't really weld much there's cutouts for where the either the robot or the human can weld and they simply don't fill up much with weld that's to stabilize the internal jacking point which is like I say, it goes in that section there. Um, looking round to the rear, this was where it was really suffering with corrosion on these edges up here that weren't very nice. And now they're very strong. You can really pinch that, rub that quite hard and you're not gonna get anything off. You're not gonna break through this. There's no edges or lips that you could accidentally catch and, and peel off. Um, it's very, very strong and good. And then looking on the ledge as well, we do go as far as we can to make sure that the seam section is all this ledge section and all the way around here. I can't get the camera in there, but trust me, it's, uh, it's all finished, all coated. Um, we've also got sections here later on, which we're gonna do cavity waxing on, which we're gonna see. And now at this angle with the bright torches on, you can just see the texture that I talk about. So really nice finish, which is close to replicating the BMW system. Now we're gonna go under the car and have a look, see what's underneath. So here we are looking at the left hand side here, but we're on the inside edge now. I'm just trying to see if I can get the camera up into that area where I keep about up here, which is completely protected. Like I say, we have to mask off around the axle area because the axle is still in the car. We simply have to spin it until we give it an end finish, which is basically this step edge here. Um, if the axle is out or at a later date coming out, then we'd obviously work from this area up into the axle area. But at the moment, we're doing um, the, 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 the vehicle built up. Um, so there we go. We've got the rear jacking point. And then you've got the overlipped or overlapped panels where they join together. This is the seal section. And then going down here, you can see this blue is the masking tape. So what I suppose I'm trying to get across is that the stable seal sealer is applied from every angle. So as well as going from outside of the car facing under the car, we're under the car facing outside to make sure that we get that. And these little castellated flutes are water drain outlets, but also areas that um, sprayable seam sealer will come out later. Sorry cavity wax will come out later on once we start doing our cavity wax process through here you'll start i'll video it as it happens and you'll start to see cavity wax dribble out of all these areas which means the internal sections are well protected as well so then now going up to this front section this is typically where we get most of the problems and where this car was suffering with quite a lot of corrosion um very nice durable system now and the car is just on some basic wheels um, these are our our wheels they're called space savers it's just what we put on a vehicle when we're working with it so that we know um, it doesn't matter what happens to these wheels these aren't the customers wheels for example the owners wheels um, and then we've done a gentle blend out here you can see remember this panel lip here was suffering with corrosion very tight area to get to I can't even get the camera in there but you get an idea of how well it's been protected and I might be able to try and get the camera on this ledge here the fun facing down again this is a really hard area to paint but we've been able to do all that section as well and going up round the uh, round this side front as well. Yeah, it's hard to video this lip. This is where we were just looking at on this edge here. Uh, I was just gonna see if we can get our camera and lighting system all in there at the same time. It might be quite hard, but yeah, you just about get the idea. I mean, it's completely textured, seam sealed all the way through. So we're very happy that we've sealed everything, taken rid of, getting rid of corrosion, uh, eliminated it, neutralized it, painted it, sealed it, and top coat colored it. And now we're gonna be going on to um, a little bit of body color overspray, which is Estral Blue. Now this is another nice touch, which 
Some cars need, some cars don't. Depends how bright the color of the car is. Um, being an Estrel Blue, there was Estrel Blue overspray on the underside. Now that may have been from a body shop painting the car previously. Um, if it had paintwork done on the side, or it might have been from uh, the factory when the robots painted the car. So what we're going to do is just blend a gentle bit of overspray on the underneath to try and replicate how we uh, remember and how we videoed the underside when we found some blue sections down that, that stamped seal section. Here's some new parts for the Z3M Coupe rebuild. Uh, jacking points, now this is um, not essential because the jacking points are really good on the Z3s, but we always like to put new plastic on, especially once we've painted an area. We think it just looks great, it's a really good contrast. So new jacking points which are going in, they sit into the seal section um, and then they're screwed in with, um, the original ones are Phillips screws, but the only ones you can now buy from BMW. They've changed them or modified them to a Torx fitting. Um, so that's the screws for them. We are putting four on there. There's actually three that we've received from BMW and one is coming from Germany. Why they keep three in the UK, I'm not sure. But I just wanted to keep one in the bag. It probably doesn't tell you much or come out on the video much, really, but it's a really old bag, very poor label, um, quite dirty, and this has come straight from BMW. So you can almost tell how many or how little they're not selling. Um, because it's obviously uh, a really old bag that's been in stock for ages. So we're going to be putting new aquaplane, uh, sorry, new jacking pads on there. These are the aquaplane guards. Now these are always quite ruined on Z3s. They're very close to the jacking points. People always jack up on them and therefore split them. They're only very small bits of plastic, but they are called aquaplane guards. And what they're designed to do is direct water away from the rear tires. So when you're driving at higher speed in water, um, it, you're trying not to allow water to hit the tire area and direct it away so that it's uh, anti aquaplane guard. Um, again, these have come straight from BMW. And what I like about this is uh, it's got a date stamp on it, 2002. So that's June 26th of June 2002. And that's a brand new part. So it's obviously brand new old stock. They're obviously not needing to reproduce anymore at the moment. So that's a nice thing. Um, the car is a 2000, so it's getting a new component by two years, but obviously hasn't had the wear, the age, or the UV. So it's a, a new old part, as we'd say, from BMW. Then we're going to be replacing the outside temperature sensor, that's the bracket that lives in the right-hand side rear quarter panel area. Those are always heavily corroded and they either break or just mean that they corrode the sensor and you can't ever get it off if you need to service it. So we'll be replacing that bracket along with the fixing for it there. And then the side cert trims, uh, the, the clips for those trims commonly break, the entrance cover ones that say coupe or BMW. So there's some black ones. Those are 15.1 mil long and then the white ones are 15.1 eight mil long or it might be vice versa but yeah new clips for those to go on so that will just finish the job off very nicely so here's the new jacking pad the blue uh, the uh, black plastic against the um, finished outer seal textured section and like I say we've done what we found the car like um, which was a blue overspray which is just fading out towards the center of the car um, now this is what it would have been like from factory again because you see it on the e46s that we restore and um, and we do have a good interest in trying to replicate things. So the outer seal section was um, was was original e coat color like this, and then the obviously the metal seal, uh, the replaceable boltable one, was on there when the car was painted, and then the overspray just ends up going underneath the car, and that's what we've tried to recreate there. And that will just dull down. Obviously, it looks bright at the moment because it's just been applied and I've got bright lights on it. But that will dull down naturally once the car is driven and got some more road film on it. But that gives you an idea of what it would have been like from factory. So now the body color paint's been applied, which is the Estrel Blue we talked about underneath and the jacking points installed. Now it's really important to do the cavity waxing. Now this has to happen before the outer panels go on, ideally, because there is different channels along the seal section. So you can't just do the whole thing um, from underneath through the jacking points. And uh, it's the same going through these holes as it is going through the jacking point, because when you look through these holes, you can see the top of the jacking point. So we're now gonna do um, a little bit of cavity waxing just to show you that the internal sections are protected. And now what the aim is, is this for to dribble out all the holes so that we know the metal pieces that are touching and joined together um, are going to be uh, full of wax, which is basically an inhibitor to stop corrosion. So the uh, underside section, you can see the wax content, which is coming out of the flutes 
and any metal joins. Now it's, you can actually see it dripping out of there, which is fantastic. It's exactly what we want. And what I'm really liking to see is that these areas are, are filled with wax. Now it's still in liquid form, which means that it will take a couple of hours to solidify, but that gives it a great protection and means that any rust that was trapped between metal layers is either going to be slowed down or basically eliminated from growing any further. The area that we need to keep clear is that one there because that one is a lot larger. That's the water drain outlet. As you can see, it's clear. There's no way wax is going to fill that one up, but all the other little ones are absolutely fine to fill up. So now Dave is going to cavity wax in the middle of the car. And now we're going to see some start to come out of these sections here, I'd imagine. You can see the gas coming out. And there is just starting to trickle out now. So yeah, it took quite a while, but that's what we're doing is filling the cavity up. So we're not going to actually brim it with liters and liters, but we've got a special uh, half a meter wand with a 360 degree fan nozzle on the end, which means the whole internal circumference of those seal sections, regardless of what shape they are, are coated. And once it gets over the um, sort of the low level output, which is this fluted section, then it starts dribbling out. So that again is now the middle of the car done. And then we might as well do the rear whilst we're here because it's always an interesting thing to watch cavity wax coming out. I don't know why, but it's, well, it's, it's something that's not really videoed much. So people don't really get to see this in action or how it happens. So. So it's nice to show it. Now this one where it's draining out of just there is a water drain outlet. So that one will have to be kept clear. So if the wax starts to solidify and tries to block that up, we'll clear that one. All the other ones that it's dripping out of is fantastic. And now what we can do by looking at this is see that these three flutes here are empty. So we'll need to put a little bit more in that area directly above or just in front of the jacking point there, we're gonna try and now install some more so that we can make sure that all these gaps and sections of metal are extremely well protected. So the work on the Z3 is now finished. As you can see, the wheel arch liners are back in and the outer seal panels are on and also the front wings are on. The new jacking pads are on. You'll be able to see them probably if we lift up above the jacking pads or the arms of the lift inside. So what we are concentrating on is the chassis. We're quite well aware that there are corrosion points on the outer panel and that's what we call finished paint. Finished paint is needing to be done at a body shop and we are not a body shop. We simply do underside work and textured paint finishes. So this is something that the owner will need to deal with and get done um, if there's any other small little scabs of corrosion starting. That's a very straightforward, easy thing to do, but obviously needs a body shop and an oven to carry out finished paint on the outside, whereas we deal with <coughs> texture paint. So what we're looking at here is the front sill section. Now this is obviously just been painted, so it is uh, looking quite bright in these bright lights and an astral blue finish, which just naturally blends down the sections underneath the car as it would from factory, like we've already discussed in this video. So there's no loose corrosion, there's no corrosion whatsoever, and there is no loose seam sealer. And what we're looking at here, you might see these golden marks. Remember that we cavity waxed the car previously in the last video. So this is cavity wax is starting to solidify and be quite a solid structure now, which is great. That's really what we want. You can see it all the way along the section here. Remember, this is the one where the water drain output. So we need to have that one clear, but all the other ones are allowed to fill up. That creates a nice watertight seal, means water don't go that way. And it also means any corrosion that is beneath or was between the metal layers isn't actually going to grow any further. So really pleased with how that's come out. Um, the sprayable seam seal or the texture is excellent. I mean, this is the BMW items up here and here, and this is our version here. So it's very good. A um, few studs that had to be replaced due to um, one of them, no, two of them snapped actually. That one there, we've put a new rib stud in the chassis there and put the nuts back on to make sure that everything's held correctly. Um, like to put things back as we find them as best as possible. So skirts are on, going down the rear towards the back of the car. Now these are areas that we need to put um, the aquaplane guards on, which we will do once we've got the car down off the ground. We can't because the lifting arms are large that they stop the, the special um, new uh, aquaplane guards that we bought going in. One goes into there, 
one goes into that space up there. Remember, we had to cap it and stop it somewhere because obviously um, the corrosion was uh, visible up in those areas, but they were behind the axle plates. And we're not taking the axle out at this stage. So that's why you see certain areas of blue and then corrosion up there because we're not on an underside restoration. We are simply taking care of localized corrosion. And you can see areas that were well deep back behind the skirts and the wheel arch liners that we've taken care of and you saw in the video that have been removed of corrosion, um, treated and resealed and painted, but are now completely deep behind the bolted seal sections that you'd never have access to and never would have known that were corroding. But those were actually the worst points. Those bits at the back where my finger is were worse than the front section. So um, I'm glad that we're able to take care of them. And then just going on to the right hand side, we have to see the right hand side front section as well. You see it's an estero blue finish underneath and like I say it just gently blends out to the underside which is what it was like when the car came in and certainly from sort of a factory finish. So um, it's very similar with this section as well. You can see that the, um, the cavity wax which is this golden sort of colour, amber colour which is coming out or has come, it's finished coming out of the chassis um, and then that is just a, a completely uh, protected finish no more corrosion, you've watched the process to see what we've gone through to get to this point. So it's not painting on top of corrosion, it's removing the corrosion, going back to bare metal, treating it with the chemicals, then the paints, then the sprayable seam sealers, top coat colorings, and then cavity wax. So there we go, that is what we've done on this Z3 um, to make it as good as possible, uh, whilst the complete of the vehicle is still fitted to it. So as in no exhaust system came off, no gearbox, no, rear axle, things like that. We can go, um, let's just pan out and show you what it looks like now from underneath looking in. Now we can go uh, extensively further. We can do all the central sections in here. We can do a complete underside restoration. I mean, if you've watched any of our videos on our YouTube channel, you'll know us, Swedish Motorsport, well known for that style of work. We can uh, mainly predominantly on the three series cars, but obviously any BMW will work on and do know very well. So if you're watching this video and you have a Z3, uh, any model really, and you'd like this style of work with corrosion removal and treatment processes down the seal section, whether it's just at the front or whether it's the center or the rear, whether it's all of the central sections, whether it's the rear axle, absolutely, we can do anything you might like. So if you like this style of video, please obviously like the video, subscribe, feel free to share it, hit the notification bell, and do contact us if we can help you with any of this sort of work.